Konnichiwa. Welcome to the Marshall Maze. I'm without my partner in crime, but I do got a special guest for us today. Our guest at this time began his martial journey in 1975 in the martial art known as Dai Nan Wan Ryu Jiu Jitsu under O Sensei Richard Lazarus. Since that time, our guest is trained in the martial arts of Judo, Shuren Ru Goju Shio, Jiu Jitsu, Aikido, Bokendo, Running Fist Kung Fu, and has firearms training. More notably, our guest has hosted numerous judo tournaments as a director and referee. He's instructed for the Merrimack Pals Judo Program and has hosted Judo and Jiu-Jitsu seminars all over the Tri-State area. He's a member of USJA, USA Judo, All Japan Saibukan Association, and WWA. Our guest at this time is New York's own Frank Banano Shiha. Konnichiwa, sir. Welcome to the Marshall Maze. Konnichiwa, man. How you doing today? <laughs> I'm all right, brother. I'm all right. Yeah, so like, you know, I mean, off off air, we we, we, uh, we said, uh, you know, I was having a hard time saying your name properly. So you're like, like the mob. But now, now the mob's been in the news a lot lately, right? I mean, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not I'm not from New York, but I've been hearing a lot about it in the mainstream uh, news. They found well, all those bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they, they have all these podcasts with uh, Michael Francis and uh, uh, what's the other guy's name? Sammy the Bull. Gravano, they're all, you know, they're talking about a lot of it, you know? Yeah, no, they, yeah, they're all telling on each other now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think they forget the statues of limitations hasn't ran out, you know, you yeah, never know. Yeah. And stuff like that. That's for sure. Yeah, so, all right, so we're going to dip right into it. I mean, so you've, you've had a long career, I mean, from 1975, um, then moving forward. And and you 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 grew up in the old school. So tell me tell me tell us because I mean the main the main topic for today, ladies and gentlemen, is really getting us back to the old school. We're gonna jump back and forth. We're gonna we're gonna have a good palaver, but we really gonna take it back to the old school. And when I say old school, help help us out, help our listeners out. Talk to us a little bit about the old school, Shion. Well, you know, again, when I had started, I was very young, um, and I didn't know what to expect at all. Um, you know, of course, w like a lot of people, what gets you started is I was watching the Green Hornet and Cato was my holy mackerel. Look at this guy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for a martial art. And I have an older brother that um, he started taking karate in, in Hempstead. I grew up in North Merrick, which is in Nassau County on Long Island. And um, he started first and then. Um, Cousin of mine also who was very influential for me to get into it, found uh Dine on Juan Rue out in Bay Shore and called my brother and said, Hey, you gotta see this guy. This is the place you gotta come. So my brother went first, and then he said, Hey, you have to come. This is the place for us to train. And again, I started going with him. I had no idea what to expect. Never walked into a dojo before. And when I went in there, I was amazed by, first of all, it was 10, 10 students on the mat. 50% of them were already black belts, right? Uh -huh. And the training, I, I stood on the side for the first night. And the training was grueling. And I'm like, okay, I guess this is it. You know, my first my first round at it, going at it. So we started. We had, at that time, our teacher had custom geese made for us. We actually had a, a, a tailor would size you up and you'd get two geese, mm -hmm. right? Custom, they were denim. He had the patches on it, uh, the back patch, the, uh, the a tiger on the front, and uh, started started sessions. Oh, Again, the, the night started, warm-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks. And I'm, I'm talking about an hour at least, you know, before you got into anything. Then all the ukeme, you know. Uh, then, you know, some of these classes would go into three or four hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I just can remember that the intensity, I was afraid. Because some of the, the senior guys were really like keyed in, you know? Yes. And I and and there was one black belt 
one black belt named Jim Rivera, which he's the Florida representative for Deadly Art of Survival. Okay. Yeah, I was going to mention, uh, I, I was noticing that you're rocking the hat, you're rocking the gear. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. So he he was the guy I was watching. He was the head of the line. Mm -hmm. And I would watch that man move, and his technique was perfect. I used to watch him kick, punch, and they, believe me, you couldn't wipe the sweat off your head. If you wipe your sweat, you were down push-ups. If you broke stance, you were down for push-ups. There was no softness here. Mm -hmm. When we did Kumite, when we started doing Kumite, we had no equipment on. We were getting banged up. So, uh, you know, all of this training, and then Osensei would eventually come in because we were in his house. Mm -hmm. He built, it had to be a 30 by 30 extension off the back of his house. And it was, we had a bathroom, a sauna, and the training area. Mm hmm we had a wrestling mat that was covered by white, a white canvas top. And underneath that was a, was a oak floor that he had put in. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just hours of intense training. Uh, we, you know, he, we were doing karate, you know, punch, kick, you know, we'd get into the jujitsu aspect. Um, we're doing body grabs, rear body grabs, mug attacks, uh, knife attacks, club attacks. You would just go and and even if, if the class loaded up to 15 or 16, people would sit down, have to sit because there wasn't space to be having everybody on the mat at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first two guys would go, you'd watch the second two. And every time they're, they're getting critique, I used to be told because I started at the end of the line. You should have no mistake because you're watching everybody get critiqued. And of course, the pressure's on. You get out there, you're the last guy. You're like, oh. But it, I got a great learning experience from that. Uh, knuckle push ups. We used to do kicking from Seiza. My giddy, Mawasha giddy, Yoko giddy. And your top of your feet would bleed because as you have to lift your foot up and tuck back under. Mm hmm. You're rubbing on that canvas, the top oh, yeah. of your foot. Oh, yeah. yep. And all of a sudden, you got blood. You got opening up the skin. And you can never stop. Never. And the the drills, the training was intense. Uh, and a after class, Osensei, he was a good storyteller. First of all, being a, 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 a New York City detective, he had a lot of insight on the streets because he worked for the Apache, the Bronx. Mm -hmm. He worked in a lot of bad areas. He was a well-decorated police officer from Mayor Lindsay. And he'd come back with stories of how he uh, apprehended a guy. And, hey, guys, I did this. Didn't work. I had to change it up. This is what worked. So we were constantly adjusting to what he would come back, you know, oh, oh, from oh, dealing oh, oh, with. Well, let's explore that a little bit. Okay, so, I mean, because yeah. there are some, sometimes folks get so caught up on the traditional, they get uh, what the term is conservative. They don't want to um, add anything new, and they, they want to just, because this was the status quo, this is the way it's always been. And now what you're telling me is even back then, so we're going we're going all the way back 1975, there were folk, yeah. uh, your, your old sensei was thinking, hey, man, I tried this. It didn't work. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's revamp it. Yeah, yeah. He did that all the time, Sensei. Mm -hmm. He did that all the time. And again, even footwork patterns. You know, again, he was to to me, he was ahead of his time in martial arts because of his oh, well, he was in the Air Force, but he had such a a, a way about him. He was a a, a, a a he walk into the room right away, you can see you can feel him in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one very charismatic and um he had, and he was also big, you know, he started pumping weights. You, I couldn't wrap my arms around this guy, you know, <laughs> they go, Frankie, that, that thing used to call me Frankie, Frankie, get behind me, grab me. I'm like, I said, well, say, I can't get my arm around you, you know, and uh, well, grab my wrist, you know, my wrists were fat, you know, 
my little <laughs> hands, you know, like, you know, but he was a massive guy, you know, he was, and yet could move. And uh, again, we used to spar him and uh, which he really was very gentle with some of us, but some of the older guys, the more seasoned guys, I seen him hit them and put them into the wall, you know, and then say enough, you know, but again, the training again was, I, I don't even see that type of training anymore today. What you know? would I mean? Well, because you 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 get yeah. sued. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's no. the first thing. I mean, you know, when I started teaching, I tried to do it, but I said this ain't working for me because the students are quitting. Mm. You know, as I as, as you know, you go I, I, as I got into the to the nineties. You know, I'm trying to still instill that that training and that hard training, and it, it just wasn't it wasn't happening where people could do it. You know, um. I often wonder if that has to um, do with a lot of because remember we were all influenced, like you said, the Green Hornet, old Kung Fu movies, and we all we all grew up on the training montage. Right. In, in any move, any of those movies, if you're a fan of old cinema, they always had like Rocky. Right. Everybody says it came from Rocky, but I think Rocky right. got it from old you know Chinese uh, cinema, where yeah. they almost always showed like the guy get beat up, then he would train, right, and he would and he go through all this crazy training, holding the things up. So we were already mentally preconditioned to to want to sit in horse stance for right. hours on end yeah. at where the newer generation as they come through it's more about the repetition of technique and a lot less about because you know, i had once had a student say to me well if we're going to do push-ups and sit-ups i can go to the gym <laughs> the ymca is right down the road you know what i'm saying it crossfit <laughs> you know i came here to learn a martial system you know yeah. and, and we used to say well this was the way to test your resolve but right. I'm, I'm here <laughs> you know right. give, give give me something right yeah yeah well when you're doing fingertip push-ups japanese shinto push-ups mm -hmm. where people can't kick them get on their fingers and we're trying to explain to them you got to get your fingers strong got to get your hands strong because when you start doing nukite and strikes with fingers you can't let your fingers bend oh, yeah. and part of that is the strengthening of the fingers a lot of that you know mm -hmm. and you know people get on their fingertips and can't cake out you know they're like i can't get on my fingers you know so again we would do hundreds of those a night and, you know one night we did jumping jacks for an hour straight and oh, we would, you know you, you <laughs> drop insane. He was just he was just putting you through this test to see how much you can endure and where he wanted you to be, you know. But, but at the end of every class, he'd sit us down, Cesar, and then Mokso, and then we sit and he said, "Now close your eyes. We're going to meditate now." And we and he'd start talking about um, the sages in the mountains, mm -hmm. and he'd go through a story, and you got your and now he's calming you down, bringing you down. And then all of a sudden, it is, oh, you may. You know, when you hopped up, you had to jump up into a fighting stance, you know. Again, the, the training I got from him is irreplaceable. Um, you know, I, I'm so fortunate to have had spent time with him. Um, and the guys that we did have in the dojo were, were excellent, all of them. You know, um, I, I was forced, you know, a couple of guys took a liking to me because of, you know, Listen, I had street fights when I was a kid. I had street fights, and we was, you know everybody get into a fight. You know, I was in a fraternity, mm -hmm. right? So when you're in a fraternity, you better be you know, hold your own, right? And, and of course, your name was Frankie. Yeah, Frankie. <laughs> and, and listen, I was a small guy, mm -hmm. and you know what? I a five foot four. I was a hundred and forty pounds, so I always had guys messing with me. And that's why I really started studying, because once I started learning, people's attitude against me changed because they started to see my development and my my confidence. Right. Yes. So, you know, um, but again, my, he was the he really um, was a big part of it. And again, also Jim Rivera, man, let me tell you. He was also he wouldn't let up on me. Him and he had a brother, John, also. John was just as dangerous as him. Um, again, they would not let up. They 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 took a liking to me, and they spent a lot of time in grooming me, you know? Okay. And then I went off with Jimmy. We opened up the Owaza in, uh, in uh, Babylon, West Babylon. 
And we had all kinds of trouble. We had bouncers coming in, you know, wanting to fight, and, you know. And you know, he would say to them, before you get to me, you got to fight him. And he would point at me. Mm. And they'd see me going, hey, what do we got? Hey, get on the mat. Let's go, man. You know, and I beat the shit out of them. You know, <laughs> I, I would. It was, listen, you're, you're in our, our, you know, I did what I had to do to, 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 to keep myself, you know, at a certain level, you know. Go Nichiwa. I'm Israel Lopez Sensei of the Marshall Maze. Right now, you might be asking yourself, what is the Marshall Maze? Well, I'm here to tell you. The Martial Maze is a martial arts podcast that deals with the complexities and pitfalls that one encounters when navigating the field of study that is martial arts. These discussions are from the points of view of actual martial artists, and we cover it all with the occasional special guest, who of course are masters in their fields of study. From the president of the United States Judo Association to karate and kung fu royalty, Myself and Barack Yalad Shidoshi have over 40 plus years of martial experience. So please join us as we make our way through the martial maze. New episodes drop weekly wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. So at this point, I, I have to stop real quick and say, and for our listeners, I mean, if you haven't read the bio or any of that good stuff before before this episode, right. so um, Shion is from New York. If you haven't right. figured that part out, right? right. Um, you know, because a lot of times, you know, I get a phone call or somebody will comment. They'll be like, "Well, man, it sounded really rough. Where did that person grow up?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "Well, you know, <laughs> New York. You know, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter what color you were." You know what I'm saying? It matter where you were at, right? As a matter of fact, the dojo, when I went, I was the minority. I was about to say, didn't you train with the brothers? I was the minority. It was Spanish, Puerto Ricans, and black guys. Mm -hmm. And it was me and my brother were the only white guys, really, that stepped in there. Well, I don't know. Aren't you Italian? (laughs) Yeah, well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think once they heard my last name, though, I used to use that. They're like, oh, bananas, let's not mess with them. We don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> I feel like they call him Frankie the Hands. Yeah. Because <laughs> he was laying hands, you know? But anyway, it was, it, again, it was a great, uh, actually, I, when I, when we got married, when I got married, I invited uh, Osensei and Jimmy and John, the, the Rivera brothers, to my wedding. And my father went up to Osensei and thanked him. Personally, thanked him for taking care of his son, mm. you know, and uh, he felt he told me afterwards, he said, Man, your father, you, uh, when he said that to me, I, I got chills all over my body because I realized what I did for you, you know. And then he brings a judo guy in. Oh, here we many go. Many years later. This is my experience with judo. This this little Asian guy by the name of Walter Ring. Mm hmm. So I walk in and to the dojo, and Sensei goes, "Hey, we got a judo guy teaching." Now, if you knew who he was, oh Sensei, he set you up a lot. Mm. You know, he was that type of guy who set you up. You know, got an old judo guy back there. Go get geared up and move around with him. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my late twenties. You know, I'm uh, I feel good, right? So I get geared up, and the little guy comes out, and he goes. He opens his mouth and it's a, he's Chinese with a Brooklyn accent. <laughs> I look and I'm totally thrown off. Because, hey, Frank, I, I heard all about you. Go in and get your gi on, warm up, and let's move around a little bit. So I'm like, look at this old guy. What is he talking? He was probably late 50s, 60s, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. I go get the, my gi on. I'm warming up. He goes, you're warmed up? Let's go. So we grab him, we start doing Randori. He threw me within 15 seconds in Tomonagi. Uh. And li- listen, I went 15 feet across the room. Mm. I hit bang. I got up. I said, son of a God, what did this guy do? 
I, first of all, I didn't even feel what he did. I was, I knew I was in flight. Uh -huh. So I got up and he's laughing. <laughs> yeah, what happened? I said, I don't know, but let's go at it again. And I went and I grabbed him and we're moving again with the same throw. Mm. Pull him down. And now my teacher's watching this and he's got a big grin on his face because he's watching it and he's going, so you guys don't think you're about at your badasses, don't you? Well, look at that guy. What did he just did to you? I shook his hand, man. I said, I want to learn that. And that's when I really started learning the, the art of judo, the gentleness. What did that mean? It, you know, this, the, 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 uh, the softness and hardness. The softness is I didn't know what he did. He did it so good. The hardness is when I hit the ground. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, I, I just couldn't. I was amazed. I'm like, gosh. I well, said, and we were learning judo throws. We had 30 judo throws in our in our uh, system, and we were doing formal throws. You know, just mm -hmm. each guy throw yeah. and learn them. And in case you do them in, in self-defense. But now... We do them. You're doing them in combat now with a guy who's an expert in it. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, man, he he. We started. We went big on judo. That was it. Then we started going to the tournaments, and he was. You know, I, I was meeting different people, and I was. A, I'm like, wow, this is a whole. And working with different guys, um, I, I I was amazed on how great those judoka were. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I met Rusty Kanakogi, Mr. Kanakogi. I, I, you know, I trained with also Matsumura Sensei, which, which that's an old other part of my history. But just getting introduced to who's who in judo in New York, yeah, I, I really got into it. Um, I started going to New York State judo meetings. Um, mm -hmm. I got, I got, was getting trained and refereeing from Rusty Kanakogi. I, you know, I was just really getting involved in it. Um, I started doing judo tournaments, running them with a, a friend of mine out of Merrick who ran a Merrick PAL. Okay. So we would do, I think it was called the Summer Slam, and then we were doing the Spring Fling. We were doing two a year out of the school, and we, we set these tournaments up Friday nights. We would bring the parents in who would do, we would teach them timekeeping, scorekeeping, I had all the referees, uh, George Paziak, who was, again, another mentor of mine in judo, more of a, mm -hmm. a po political side of things and bringing me into the right people. Um, he would bring the referees. We had the uh, the ambulance set up, the medic area. We had the areas roped off for the – we had an area for the competitors to warm up. I mean, we were doing it really well. We were running – we would run about 150 to 200 kids in about – three to four hours. Oh, wow. Done. Everybody out. Gone. You know? So I did that a few years. Then we were running tournaments, uh, uh, not tournaments, seminars, um, camps. We did a camp out in Riverhead. Uh, it's called, it was called the 4-H camp. Um, we had, um, we opened it up to some jujitsu, some Aikijitsu people. So it was, it was a, just a, it was a long day. No, it but, was an overnight so, camp. I think we did two days. We we do have come in on a Friday night, do Saturday, and leave Sunday morning. So I do have a question then. I mean, because we're we're in my world, which is judo. For those that don't know, and you should know if you're a fan of the show. Um, so if you had what what I, I don't know if you keep up on judo now and stuff. I you know, I hope you do. And I hope, I do, I hope yes. that, yeah, you still kind of watch it here and there, yeah. you know, once a judoka, always a, judo a judoka. Would you say that judo looks very different now than it was back then? I think so. You know, because I often, I often think about that because remembering even you, you even said it, you guys were training your judo to utilize in the real street right. and then did the tournament, which yeah. your concept I would I would surmise because I, I still I still because I learned judo as a martial art first and then the sport second. And I realize even with us that the concept of Kazushi is different, meaning 
in the real world, I don't create Kazushi. My my whoever's trying to do something to me creates that Kazushi. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. in sport, when I'm when I'm in sport, I have to create Kazushi because we right. both we both we understand balance. So right, that, right, you know, right. and I, I always wonder that. Um, and I do. I I thought it was just me, so that's why I always ask an older judoka, you know, somebody who's done it a lot longer, who came before. Because in 1975, sir, I, I was born. <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. So. Uh, so it just means you know. I just, it kind of helps validate my thought process anyway. When I hear you know an older person like yourself, or somebody, one of our elders come on yeah. coming up yeah. says, "Hey, man, you know, it is different." You know what I'm saying? So it is different. And I again, I I went to uh, the New York um, Athletic. In March, uh, they had the Olympians there. They had, I think, five teams there, and it definitely the play is different, mm. you know. And and you're not really you're not really seeing. I mean, I, I, again, you're, you're not really seeing what I used to see. The the the, the positioning now is more of a bent over, mm -hmm. a pull down, instead of a, a an erect posture, um, and 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 you know. Again, I guess I was taught never to bend my head down and get you down low. You know, I um, I, I you know, standing of an erect posture and breaking balance from here, and not, you know, if you're getting pulled down, you you know, you got to work your way around it. But it wasn't as clean as I it used to be. I mean, I used to go, I I would to go there usually every year. Um, they they do that tournament in March. And it was a lot, the competition and the older guys that used to play were a lot better, mm. you know? Um, so, you know, <laughs> again, it's, the world is changing. Things are changing. People are mixing up, you know, again, too, when you're mixing mixed martial arts, yeah, you know, that, that is all falling into because they're doing MMA today, you know? And um, if you're doing BJJ and judo and then things start changing and mixing up there, if they're doing kickboxing and judo, it's things are changing there, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but again, I believe it's what you like to do is what you stick with. You know? Well, that's true. That is 100% true. I mean, there are some people. Works um, for you. Well, yeah. may not work for me. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But as far as we go to street, I know what works for me in the street because I've defended myself a few times and I've always come out. My thing is escape, get out. Um, if I have to, it, it's never usually lasts that long. It's escape, punish, and move and get out, you know. Um, I'm not there looking to go rounds with a guy. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, you know, there's um, one of the Marshall Brothers always says that uh, when it comes to with the conditioning and stuff like that, because it's always the round robin argument. In a yeah. real combative situation, your fight, if it lasts over a minute, you done done something wrong. <laughs> you know, and you're, and you're a bigger yeah. guy than me. Yeah. If I ran into you on the street, I'm not going to look to pick a fight with you and start. But I won't let you push me that around. Well, you know what? But I'm going to tell you, sir. Um, most martial artists, uh, real, real, real good ones anyway, yeah. typically don't pick fights. I know. <laughs> like, he I mean, that's the truth them. to it. I mean, even, yeah. even even some of the more classier MMA guys. I know a lot of MMA guys get a bad rap because a lot of them sometimes can be meatheads. But they're meatheads in the octagon, you know, and they play the role outside the octagon. Um, we have an episode coming up. Um, thankfully, we're back on. We're back when this airs. Um, uh, well, because this is going to probably air um, uh, tomorrow. Cause I'll, I'll get to it. I'll finish it, edit it up, and you know, cause you know, and then air, let it let it just drop tomorrow. Cause we've been tied up. We had our gala, but um, uh, the next episode of Modern Combatives to drop is the uh, Slippery Pete, Peter Barrett, and he's an MMA guy. And if you meet him for like the first time, or if you met him in MMA in that realm, you would say, "Man, this guy's a, this guy, man." The, he, but he's really not. He's a great guy. He's a really nice guy. He's a stand up guy, you know. And he's, he's you know, he's a, he's a he his craft is where he's at you know what i'm saying he's he's yeah, uh yeah, yeah. he's a, he's an elite player so you know that's his caliber of play you know i just we just opened up a hotel you know i build hotels i'm in the uh, construction industry right so we we built one in la right across from staples center it's called the moxie ac and um so we just did the opening i think it was two months ago for the eighth floor, it's it's a killer floor. We built a wrestling ring over the bar, and the wrestling ring goes up and down. Oh, so they, what? Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be bananas. Wait, go wait, wait, like, like WWE style you, wrestling it, it, ring. 
Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm digging yeah. the dog. I got to show you a video that I took when we opened it. We had women wrestlers up there. Oh, that's got to be awesome. Yeah. But anyway, who came in, and I walked right into him, Chuck Liddell. Oh, wow. And he had a big grin on his face. Because when I turned, he was right there. I said, Chuck Liddell. He looked, smiled. He put his hand out. We shook hands. Great guy. Hey, how you doing? And he just moved on, you know. But he didn't snub me. Yeah. You know? And I, I was like, wow, because there were celebrities in and out. It's, you know, it's L.A., you know. They heard about this place. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check it out, man. The next oh time God. I'm in yeah. L.A., I I'm actually, like, I didn't know it existed. Wow. Okay. I, actually, I actually spoke to Nathan Ingram. I said, hey, you got to do what uh, Dascom out in L.A. I got the place. You know, you can have everybody can stay in the hotel. There's restaurants, yeah, and there's entertainment. <laughs> so, yeah. Man, oh, listen, it would, it would, uh, yo, look, if y'all can make that happen, um, yeah. Nathan, if you're listening, yeah. <laughs> you can make that happen. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I would listen. It doesn't take me much to travel, um, but yeah, to get back out in LA is always nice. I, I mean, I yeah. completely, I, I, I can't afford to live out there, but uh, I do enjoy the visits. And yeah, stuff, it's yeah. good. It's good out there. But again, you know, um, you know, again, I, I, I appreciate you asking me to be on. You know, um, I've been watching a, a, a lot of your your episodes, and I think it's a great thing, man, that you do. You talk to people and. Um, get to know who they are you know well we're actually leaning we're going to lean more into um between uh this season you'll see a little more of it and then um going into season four you're going to see a lot of it it's we're really going more to documentary style filming um i like that a lot more i wanted to, it's not just enough to show a system of style there's like plenty of stuff on there on there like you'll see yeah, like yeah. i get the analytics all the time and i'll watch how right. somebody only watched just the fighting part and that's right. it. And they moved on, you know, and it's right. my thing is, is I want to bring someone into your school. So, however, with that being said, a lot of the people we're doing, we're going to be doing are people that are still active. Um, right. Because what good is, I mean, as much as I love categorizing, I mean, cataloging, ooh, I just said categorizing, cataloging, you know, the a, a lot of the guys who, who we, we're, we're standing on the shoulders of you guys. Yeah, you guys yeah, came before, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? A lot of us continued our martial journey because we might have trained with you or we might, you know what I mean? And, and we've gone, and we know what you've gone through. So, you know, that's right. awesome and great. So we still want to document that. Um, however, Matter as, fact, you, you and I had both had neck surgeries. Yeah, right. yes, 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 yep, yeah. Right. yeah so that's yeah, what kind of um, killed me from uh, really getting into doing a lot more of the, 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 the tournament or the randori because of my neck. You know, you know? I, I, like I told you, I would have loved to say that my injury took place in a judo tournament or a fight. You know, that had been great. That I don't know if that would that would be like a great narration. You know, I got hit and, 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 uh, and it just happened, uh -huh. or, you know. Um, but no, no, you and I, because we were both in the uh, construction game. Right. Um, me working for the Commonwealth. Um, basically, uh, um, long story short, um, someone from public safety didn't do their due diligence, um, was on a loading dock that hadn't been inspected. We, it was not OSHA compliant, is the long story short. Oh. Oh, yeah. that and um you know went off the loading dock i went beautiful ukemi beautiful amazing ukemi um and i will tell you that ukemi saved my life yeah um it was a fall from less than it's crazy when they think about it because it kind of replays in my mind all the time and it yeah. was from it was from uh less than five feet you know less than five feet and my neck now was made of titanium from a fall yeah. from yeah. less than five feet right yeah, well, well my, my happened during the practice and a joke Oh. But the, the guy, yeah, the yeah, guy applied the choke. He put there. all his weight in. He popped my disc because mm. he was choking wrong, and he did it so quick. And he was a heavyweight. He was about two thirty on top of me. So, you know, it was during practice, and I felt that burning sensation go down my spine, and my neck, and my arm, and listen. Four months later, I was in getting cervical surgery. Konnichiwa. This is Israel Lopez Sensei. If you like listening to The Martial Maze, you might seriously want to think about becoming a supporter of this podcast. To do so, simply click on the support button. With a small monthly donation of $1, you will help support future episodes. Thank you once again for your support and Thank you for listening.
you know, I, when it comes to those kind of things, even even now, um, I still love doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I, I love doing uh, Judo. I'm always a 1,000% a Judo just a Judo yeah. guy. When I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, in my mind, it's it's just Nawaza, Ron Dury. It's just right, Nawaza. Right. Yeah. Um, however, there's a lot to be said. What the um, what what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has taken on a, a, a system all in its own. Like you can only like I get it. Where we know where its roots come from. You yeah. know what I'm saying, but but definitely these guys major in fighting on the ground. They major yeah, in they're fighting great on the at it. They're great yeah, and at they really, it, man. and they really are. You know what yeah. I'm saying, and stuff like that. So you can't take anything away from that. It's its own thing, and um and the and they they actually evolved the culture of the dojo. Um, I went to a buddy's place um, a couple of weeks back. And everybody was really just laid back, like it, like I'm so used to a formal class, you know, everybody's right. ready, bowing in, and and all that other good stuff. But no, there's some people kind of trickled in, yeah. You know, they got yeah. on the mat, they bowed, hey, how you doing, you know, professor? You know what I'm saying? I, I I like that too. Instead of saying the sensei, all that other good stuff, they they're kind of going with more of the academia kind of thing, professor. You know, um, and you know they get on the mat, and and again. Guys aren't horsing around, you know what I'm saying? It's like you got different levels of play. So the no matter what rank you were or no matter where you were, beginning, first day, second day, everybody kind of did their thing. But so the – the um, the um I keep wanting to say coach because that's the judoka in me. But the professor gets everybody on, uh, you know, and goes through the lesson of the day. And then when you break up the workout with different people, well, if it's your first day – you know, you, you, boom, you got somebody who's come before you who's going to kind of help you out in that department, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and stuff like that. However, with that being said, I have heard a lot of horror stories, and even myself, when I'm playing with somebody, look, man, I don't need you to kind of knock me out in a choke to know if you got me, you know right. what I'm saying, and stuff like that. Once you got my arm, I know you have that arm bar. It's there, you know what I'm right. saying? So I'm going to tap. I'm not going to let you extend. I'm right, not going to be right, trying to right. twist because I always say that's how injuries happen. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? Like you're trying yeah. to escape. I'm trying to flip my body. Now, if you come with something weak, then maybe, maybe I'm going to do a thing. But uh, again, your knee is not meant to bend sideways. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. So when you got that knee bar, as soon as it's there, I'm going to tap. I just hear a tap. And I have worked with people who get frustrated with me. They're like, yo, man, come on. You could be a little more intense. But, or And I'm like, listen, bruh, it's not worth the injury. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For me, I'm like, my, my, I want to learn. I want to be good with this. It's not worth the injury. Same thing with judo. Tell adults yeah. all the time, ukemi, ukemi, ukemi. Yeah. I lose more adults to getting in their heads and they come in, They somebody throws, and instead of just doing the break fall, just take the easy fall. The guy came in, they're trying to flip, sunfish in the air, trying to do all this hoot nanny, and they almost always inevitably get hurt. Right. <laughs> and then I never see them again. You right. know, they're, they're, they're like, yo, I had to take X amount of weeks off from work. Well, you know, let's talk about Randori against Shi'ai, right? Mm -hmm. Randori's sparring is supposed to practice. Some guys, some people don't look at Randori as that. They go into Shi'ai. Yeah. So when you're in the dojo, it's Randori. Because we used to do Randori. Then the sensei would go, Okay, now we're doing Shiite. Not now. You don't give anything yeah. up. All right. But there was a difference. You know, it's, it's Randori is sparring. It's practice. To try your stuff out. Move around with the guy. Get fluid. Get moving. Get motion going. You know. And and you know again, that's when people get hurt. They resist. I mean, when I was moving around, guy, if he had me, I'd go. Yeah, just go. That's why we learn to fall. <laughs> I mean, that's all. The whole right. purpose of Ukemi is so that I can continuously get back up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, man, you I, take a good break, fall, you you roll out, and you come back out of it. You know, yeah. and you go to the guy. Hey, great man, that was great. You know. Yeah. But when the guys are fighting, and then you see the arms, you know, the the, the shoulder injuries, the knee injuries, the ankle injuries. You know. Yeah, you know. So we at, at my school, what I do is I'll. Um, I'm I I'm a huge fan of burpees. Um, I think burpees make the world go round. <laughs> so <laughs> when I see someone um, in class, so when you run Dury, you should be all offensive, 
not defensive. I do have a couple of defensive players. That's the way they like to play. They're just very right. defensive. But I said for Ron Dury, you're supposed to be all offensive, right. no defensive. And and if you if I catch you blocking, stiff arming, you know, and you're not coming in, like you can still I can still stop your motion in order right. to, to to counter or something like that. That's right. great. But if I find if I see you, you're, you're you're blocking and you're not really giving anything up. That's that's too much like Shiite. And now we have to live in Burpeeville, Planet right. Europe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. You got you got a good point on that. I mean, that's that's the truth, man. The truth. Yeah, you know, definitely. again, I I just love you know, and I, again, I just I just promoted four young boys to yellow belt in judo. Nice. They're they're eight, eight and ten. One was ten. The other three were eight, and one of them was my grandson. Oh. And that that's when, when you know I got two grand grandsons. The little guy was not ready yet, but they just put him into wrestling. And my, oh. my wife saw him. And she said, she said, Frank, he's doing good at the wrestling. I said, well, that'll give me an edge for next year. That if yeah. he's good at that, he'll, you know, he'll be a little more serious when he, he steps on the mat. But um, yeah, it's great. And we went to World Judo Day in Hempstead. Uh -huh. The uh, the ex-president, Wizzler Jaggi, um, set this up and then we had you know we had a gathering for two hours and I brought them with me you know and then they got the spotlight you know nice let's see uh, do a throw uh, you know do something and they you know at first they froze it's their first being in front of kid people right but they they got into it you know and, and I love that you know I just you know I had a youth league before in Copeg where I used to live Mm -hmm. So I had approached Copeg Youth League and I said, would you like a judo program? And I explained everything and we 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 wind up doing it. I signed up 50 kids in one night in two hours. Uh, we had to close the door. There was more people. I couldn't take more than 50 kids. Yeah, that's They kind of like said, yeah. that's enough. How are you going to do more than 50? And then I had both O Sensei and Sensei Ing helping me. One came on Tuesday night and the other one came on Thursday night. Yeah, that's still a lot of kids. So yeah. I had a lot. Yeah. But out of 50, we took 20 to the tournament mm -hmm. and 10 of them placed. Nice. Second and third. That's nice. I like and that. listen, I, again, I had a, I gave it up because I moved further out east. Couldn't do it anymore. But again, 50 kids. I did six months with them, mm. you know. No, oh, that's awesome. And man. again, kids are great to work with, you know. Well, I mean, they, you know, especially um, with with something like judo, with with the toxicity of the world, uh, the way it is, especially now more than ever. Um, uh, I, it's my own personal feeling about this. Um, teaching a child how to punch and kick is just like, you know, the way I say it to parents. And I know there's going to be some folks out there that are really going to get in their feelings by my next statement. Um, but go ahead, get in your feelings because this is my opinion. Opinions right. are like assholes. We all have one. They all stink, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, look, would you give your child a loaded gun and send them to school? And what I get from everybody is absolutely not. Why would I do that? Well, here's the thing. When you teach a child to punch and kick, now hear me out when I say this, there's only one way to teach a child or one way to teach punching and kicking. It's correctly, period. If you can't teach it correctly, don't teach it at all. Correct. So I'm teaching you to punch and kick correctly, which means you can do, you do more damage. Look, a martial artist is as close to a super, uh, as close to a superhero as any of us are ever going to be. We can right. do things the average person cannot, period. When you train a child to do things that the average kid cannot, that child becomes a superpower, no matter how you want to flip it. You know what I'm saying? We condition them. We train them. You throw a front thrust kick properly, you, you're putting somebody through a wall, period. Yeah. You know, yeah, even yeah. as a little kid, you're still, you're what, 200-something yeah. pounds of fr pressure, bah, instantly, right? Yeah. You're teaching a child how to punch. So again, so to me, that equates a loaded gun. You're sending, and again, most adults have a hard time policing ourselves. Now you're going to put those put those kind of tools in the hands of a child and send your child off to school, yeah. and then and, and put them in an environment where we tell them, hey man, you're not supposed to fight. You're supposed to say no. You're supposed to do all those things. 
and forgetting kids are cruel. <laughs> I don't know what other people, <laughs> what other childhood they have. So I said it to parents all the time. And judo, no matter how you flip it, rub it down, is a completely defensive art. It really is. That's the way it was designed. Yeah. You don't start a fight. You right. end the fight. And yeah. everything that comes from uh, judo, uh, even even wrestling or even Brazilian jiu-jitsu um, for kids, I say, look, man, again, when you're teaching this stuff to kids, it, they're, they're not picking fights. They're just not because no. the culture behind it says, you know, you're just you're just kind of, hey, we're, you know, and in the way you live your life. And then think about the maxims in judo, jutsu ke, you know, we're always constantly teaching about you and I shining together, mutual benefit, right. mutual benefit. Right. Um and not saying that other other karate systems or Okinawan systems don't kind of have certain some maxims that are pretty close to that, but those arts and in themselves were designed for one thing. You know what I'm saying? If we think about Okinawan martial arts, Okinawan martial arts wasn't wasn't about uh, you know, let's kiss and make up. It's the first action, like the, my one of one of my martial peers always says, a Haskins sensei. Your first action or combinations of actions should be able to neutralize the perceived threat. Now, the one caveat that gets missed, and you hear it in jitsu all the time, is by lethal means. Period. Yeah, I'm taking you out. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's my opinion about it. I'm no, sorry, no, I didn't mean to monopolize no, the time. And anybody who's a fan of the show that. has heard me say that like five million, five million times. You know. Yeah, well, because you can see a lot of these kids go to these schools and they come out and they're throwing kicks and punches, and uh, you know, and and they don't have the right, it's you know, the right attitude towards it. You know, it's you know, some of the schools, and I hate to say it, is it's designed for for income revenue. They bring the kids in and and they. Teach them whatever they got to, to keep them coming, you know? Yeah. And I mean, yeah. that part and is sad. Again, we didn't, when I started, he didn't take young kids. We were young teenagers. Mm. But he did not bring in children. You know? I, it was, no, I can't, I I'm not taking kids. I mean, he, we, it was a serious thing for us. Again, back in the 70s, martial arts was just coming new. Mm -hmm. Right. It wasn't, you know, you didn't have schools all over the place, you know, late 60s, it started. Yeah. You know, and uh, again, the, the Japanese came over here, I believe, in the late 60s, 70s, where a, a, a group of them came at once and stayed, you know, and most of them landed on the East Coast. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, I don't know if, who wound up on the West, but they came in on the West and they wound up on the East, you know, because they were told to go out from the, the, the universities and promote judo and they wind up staying. Well, I think some of that had more to do where the Chinese um, were more about what they didn't want to share. The, the, right. their art, their yeah. system, because it was because even with that, um, yeah. what folks forget. Look what Bruce is, Lee went through with that. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, like. Yeah. He that was a huge no no. Like yeah. you, you didn't know this is the way we had to live. This is how we defend our lives. That you're gonna. This is our secret. Why are you sharing this? This is part of right. our culture. Right. We don't want to share this. Where right. judo, Kano envisioned it for everybody. So yeah. he was like, so he trained every. He said, listen, go, go out there and fight. Go out there and do these matches, these challenge matches. And um, that's kind of where uh the Gracies and stuff like that. When um, uh, when when they were learning, because he was a judoka, he came over to get good at the challenge matches, and, and you know, there it is. In in Japan, all the judos and all the schools, they all learn judo. Yeah, it's their culture, right? Mm -hmm. So I went to Calhoun High School. We had Coach Burry, the wrestling coach, excellent, one of the best coaches that we've had out in, on the island he was teaching judo in the class during gym okay guys we're doing judo you never hear of a wrestling coach teach judo <laughs> what do you teach he paul and sianagi yeah, yeah. soto gary ogoshi three or four basic throws uh, that he knew was set up into the wrestling and then it was because it really does it really and, does and again it was like Listen to this, you know. Still had an Olympian come out, a guy by the name of Sammy Boone. I don't know if you remember him from way back. Yes. Sammy yeah. Boone used to come to our school as a, um, a what do we call it, a teacher that comes in part-time. Uh, 
um substitute i guess uh no no it's um he would come in occasionally if a teacher was absent yeah substitute a substitute yeah. yeah he'd come in and then he'd go into the gym sammy boone so again we met i met a lot of people in, in, in my town you know that's just through martial yeah. arts well, everybody asks a lot, and they forget that um, that places like the the tri-state area uh, in, in in some parts of Massachusetts, well, in New England, I would say some parts of Massachusetts. One because of Westover Air Force Base and stuff like that, which is is located in Western Mass. But you had the tri-state area. You had half of New England. There was there was a mecca at one point in time of martial talent that just flooded in. And I think the saying was back in the day. Where if you want to know how to bang, when we use fight, if you want to know how to fight, that's a West Coast kind of, I mean, excuse me, that's East Coast. Yeah. If you want to do movies, look pretty, nice flashy kicks, all that other yeah. good stuff, good kata, you know, and things like that, um, that was more West Coast. Not saying West Coast didn't have fighters, but the rougher cats came from our neck of the woods. It was more of an yeah. East Coast thing. And yeah. stuff like that, because, of course, you know, like places where people would test you. You know what I'm saying? You weren't allowed to uh, claim to be a martial artist. Well, I have a black belt. Oh, show me. Show me that black belt. Or you'd have somebody walk into your dojo wanting to challenge you right away. They'd be like, Mom, I'm, yeah, I need to fight you first. Uh, uh, before, I t before I give you a nickel, I, I need to fight. I need to make sure you can actually do what you say you can do yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, that, that I, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, that stuff still goes on to this day in the city. <laughs> I hear stories all the time. <laughs> You know, knuckleheads yeah. coming through, you know, and they get their comeuppance and they, the next thing you know, they're like, well, that guy is still training there and he's, he, cause he went there and got beat up. <laughs> 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 like a rite of passage, you know. Yeah, so. there's a lot of kooky things in it, but um, again, I, I, um, I, you know, I'm pretty healthy at 66. I'm going to be 66 in December. Okay. And, um, you know, I got a little extra weight, which I'm working on getting off through that COVID yeah. that messed me up, you know, but I still, I go for my checkups and, you know, I'm still, I still feel pretty good with my dad at, at my age, already had heart attacks, open heart surgery, you know, and uh, I'm way past that already, you know, I mean, um, I, I take it from all the training that I've done. Yeah. That's that, you know, working that hard. You know, pumping that heart, doing something. You know, no. uh, jogging at the school. I remember my my training at was run the quarter mile, uh -huh. and then up and down the bleaches each an aisle five times each aisle in the bleaches up and down. Go to the next one up and down, up and down. That was just my my cardio, and then I would do sixty yard sprints, mm. right. So that's how I used to work out when I wasn't throwing or punching. I said, I, I'm just going to, I got to do this. I wasn't long distance, but that was to me was more conditioning. Yeah. For my heart, my legs, my body. Right. And I used to do that a lot, you know? Well, you know what? No, no, that's the next part because we get, I, again, without Baracula Shidoshi, I get caught in Judoville and I get so comfortable in, in Judoville. I continue to stay there no matter who I'm right. talking to. <laughs> um, but no, wait a minute. So there are other arts. You have other arts under your belt. Um, you have, uh, cause we're both, uh, we, uh, well, I, I, I hold a six in Okinawa Te and stuff like that. So, or, or Shurinru, um, which right. mainly Shurinru, we say Okinawa Te because there's a bunch of, it's a hybrid system. And right. for me to say, well, it's completely Shurinru. Yeah. There's, there, there's, there's licenses that come directly from that lineage, but then there's other stuff that like, I have other kata that's, that's not directly Shurinru, but you have, a um, you, it was a Matsumura. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, his is called Show Show and Ru. Show and Ru. Okay. Show and Ru. Show uh, yeah. So Ru, uh, so Ho. It's more or less a self defense. Uh -huh. Um again, training with him in judo, it wind up you doing you're doing his jujitsu because we didn't just do judo, we were doing ankle locks, all the ground lock, yeah, everything, stand up. Uh but he you know, I didn't know I was getting that one. He he wanted to promote me in, in at judo camp, the YMCA camp up up at Huguenot, New York. And he goes, I'm gonna promote you in front of your peers. You come up. And he did that. And he gave me a cardboard tube when they called me out. Because mm. they have promotion night, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh everybody lines up. You got five hundred judoka there, you know, plus you got masters 
you got guys from all over the world. I don't have you ever gone to the YMCA camp? Um, no, I've been to a couple of camps. Um, that they they're all over. Um, there's yeah. a, a gentleman out by me. He used to have one um, in right. um, Rhode Island all the time, and and I'd go to his camp. And stuff well, this like one that, you had so. you had everybody from around coaches, Olympic coaches, yes, everybody or, or that would be there. And he promoted me there, and um, he gave me a cardboard tube, and you know, I bow, everybody clap, and I sat down, and I didn't open it yet. But when I opened it to look, he had another certificate inside. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'll show you. I'll show you. I got it here. And I read it. Oh wow! Look at that. Okay, okay. that's his signature and stamp. So he gave me this. Mm -hmm. And what happened is one of uh, a guy by the name of Harry Glockland, a big jujitsu guy from New Jersey. Okay. Came running over to me. And he said, what did he give you? And I said, well, all right. I mean, I gave me a note on in, in uh, his, his jujitsu system. He says, he must think very highly of you. And he said, he doesn't really give that stuff out to anybody. Yeah. And I said, well, I got I didn't ask. I didn't know it was coming, you know. And oh, that's uh, cool. The relationship I had with that man, he, he used to come to my house. My wife would cook dinner for him. We used to train in my backyard. I threw the mats out. I had my uki back everywhere I went. I brought him. He, we trained. And I did so much with him. Well, I mean, and that's, that's a whole nother level. A whole nother level of judo with him. You know, he's considered the vanguard of judo in this country. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, he opened my eyes to even more. So, you know, when I started doing seminars, I, there was jujitsu guys, kung fu, karate, weapons, whatever. There was no one teaching judo. Mm. So they would like, would you like, so what did I start teaching? I'm teaching judo realizing i'm watching everybody well they don't know how to enter they really don't got off balancing i just would break down basics so i was labeled the judo guy <laughs> yeah that, uh, i said okay I, that's fine that because nobody's title. teaching it <laughs> you know i trained in it i did well with it but you know to me it was okay i'm honored to take that you guys want to call me the judo guy fine that they never saw me punch a kick but I can do that, mm -hmm. right? Well, so, you know, people forget there is striking in judo. It just comes later yeah. and stuff. Like anybody who knows any of the katas will tell you, oh, no, there's there's, yeah, oh, yeah. there's striking. I yeah. mean, yeah. but right. but again, that's not the major principle. Yeah, you know, I always laugh about that. I'm like, all right, look, I always call it the covenant judo chop. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Austin Powers brought that back. Uh, yep, the, the judo covenant, chop. The judo chop. <laughs> you know what's crazy is it, it's it's an effective technique, right. and it's so it looks so ridiculous, yeah. like it shouldn't work. Yeah. And then you tell people, look, if you hit them here, they're gonna just they're gonna fall down, right. and they're gonna they're they're gonna be out. And then you'll there's a whole thing on YouTube yeah. uh, where you see a, a bunch of people, and I'm, I'm laughing and I'm making light of something that's pretty serious. Yeah. But you see those the, the the foolish people that don't think it works, and they and boom, the guy's on the ground, and it was well, what happened? And and it, you know, and it, like well, we told you it, it really does work. It's it, you're yeah. hitting on the and you're shutting someone down and. Yeah. And the science is there. Don't just do it. It it's, doesn't take a lot. But, um, yeah, yeah. No, people always forget that they're striking <laughs> in judo. Yeah, but, again, I did a lot of the strike. I did a lot of kamite, a lot of fighting. I did it when I was much younger, you know. And, uh... Go Nichiwa. I'm Israel Lopez Sensei of the Martial Maze. Right now, you might be asking yourself, what is the Martial Maze? Well, I'm here to tell you. The Martial Maze is a martial arts podcast that deals with the complexities and pitfalls that one encounters when navigating the field of study that is martial arts. These discussions are from the points of view of actual martial artists, and we cover it all with the occasional special guest, who of course are masters in their fields of study. From the president of the United States Judo Association to karate and kung fu royalty, myself and Barakulat Shidoshi 
have over 40 plus years of martial experience. So please join us as we make our way through the martial maze. New episodes drop weekly wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And uh, again, after I sustained that injury, that kind of slowed me down a bit. But I still I still can work a bag. Mm. You know, I used to love working a speedball. You know, the double ended bag. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Love that. Oh, the my hands got fast. So, if you know, going back to guys I trained with, I played with C. Joe James Robinson running fist kung fu. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of private time with him because what I used to say, you know, I need something to close the gap. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm not waiting for a punch all the time, you know, because everybody demonstrates a guy throws a punch. No, no, no. Because I I also worked with boxers and you, you want to wait. Those boys throw hands. Forget yeah, I was about to it, say, there's right? more than one punch coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But James showed me to, to, to hit tack first and showed me the traps, how to trap. And then we were working the throws into the traps. Yes. So he and I, because if you ever saw him on YouTube, he's fast. He was a big boy, right? Big, fast hands. And I, when I first saw him, I said, that's what I need. Because I started looking at Wing Chun, mm -hmm. right? And I'm saying I'm missing something, part of my, you know, as I'm growing, I don't like throw punch, throw straight punch, throw roundhouse looping. Who does that? Mm -hmm. Right? I'm like, no, man. I need to know, understand the trapping, how to, how to set myself up. How do I get in and disarm them with their arms you know yeah. okay and he yep. showed me that and I, and I tell you um his thing was attack first if the intent is there attack first right and i said okay and then when i started doing you know rear cover back punch body boom then he showed me the rake and you know some of the kung fu form I, I it was going live action and now he and i are working together i'm adding my throws i'm adding my arm bars mm -hmm. my wrist locks because i said yeah, nobody grabs wrist like that to me, uh, right? How do we get when a guy's throwing? My teacher used to say, if a guy's throwing a jab, when do you want to grab his, when the hand's back, mm -hmm. right? Throw it, grab it now. When his hand is back, you got you got, you got in here, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you could trap him. So we, you know, I, I just said, I got to, I have to develop this. And I worked with him for quite a while. And um, he passed away a couple of years ago. I also got to meet James Berkeley. I met him at a, a, it was a combination tournament, self-defense tournament, judo tournament, Aiki thing. Aiki Jitsu. Yeah, and I, and, and I went and I was judging. And um, he happened, I heard, of, I heard this guy, Jim Berkeley, a student of Steven Seagal. I said, oh, and this is back. Oh, that's Akito. Akito probably back in the 80s, mm -hmm. late 80s that I met him. In the 80s, early 80s. And uh, I went up to him. I introduced myself. And I met him. He lives in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I did some light training with him. Nothing heavy. But he gave me some concepts. And we talked about his training in, in Japan because he was there for 10 years. And that's where he met uh, Seagal. And, and then he he was a, you know, he fell on, you know, his thing was more tactical studies. Well, you know, you, firearms, weapons, you know, um, and uh, he was a very, very deep guy. Very well, deep. Well, I was going to say, one of the things with Aikido is Aikido is not meant to be sport. It wasn't designed to be sport. Oh. And people look at those arts like Aikido and say, oh, bu bullshito, doesn't work. It, it wasn't designed for a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with two right. with two hands with fists. It just wasn't. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, it was designed for when the, like, it's literally, again, a completely defensive art where I'm yeah. minding my business. You come at me to do something to me, and I'm just really redirecting your energy. Boom. And stuff like that. Like, and it it sucks that it gets such a bad rap based upon what well, the people, no one just rocks into you. It's <clears throat> one of the funniest things is um, when somebody said to me, no one just grabs you. 
and I working security for as long as I have, um, even in real fights, being in real fights, I've been grabbed plenty of times. Yeah. And yeah. it's just weird when somebody does grab me and stuff like that because you're like, holy shit. Oh, that, I just oh, got grabbed. <laughs> oh, my God. Did he seriously just grab, give me his wrist? <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like yeah. my life just got so much better. And then right. techniques – that we always say that you'll hear plenty of fighters go or plenty of people as martial arts will see it and say that technique doesn't work it doesn't work it doesn't work and then you hit somebody with that technique that doesn't work in real time the first time you hit somebody with kota gayash in real time and and yeah it worked yeah. just the way yeah. it was supposed to work yes and it they're does. like well no one did you your two hands like this he's gonna punch you with the other hand until you're in real time you and he's on the ground. That punch never came. He he was never right. there. It never right. it never it didn't work out for him the way the way. But again, we're martial artists, so in our minds, we're going. Nope, I would have done this as soon as the hand pump. I would feel that and again. It goes back to the statement I said earlier to earlier um, during this conversation. Is real fighters aren't getting into fights. So yeah, I'm look. You come at me with this, yeah. I'm gonna feel that that. But you and yeah. I probably will never fight in the first place. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying. Right. I mean, me personally, yeah. in real life, I'm not. I look, people get in, get in their feelings when I make that statement all the time. I am not getting into fist fights anymore. I'm too old. Yeah, it don't make any yeah. sense. I'd rather just shoot you, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, or use a perceivable weapon. I'm like, that, and in real, well, that, well, that was the thing. Jim, Jim would always say to me, "Listen, go get a gun permit. I'll show you how to shoot." You know, he he went for professional shooting. He goes, so "We'll go to the range in Jersey because yeah. I'm." can do that but i can't you know but he said you know again his whole his whole thought thing is is about tactical strategic fighting what the arts were really about and developed mm -hmm. for and that's how deep he is um well we are um officially at time um, okay and you know no 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 brother we gonna have you back on man i i enjoyed the play hey and i'm really thankful I, I mean i hope you had a good time today i did i so, I, I like talking to you man you, yeah, you, yo, i'm about to say you and i we've had palathers but we want to yeah. do one i definitely want to have you on again with barack um because okay. they're, they're quite sure he'll have a whole another take and i'm really grateful and thankful that you uh, uh that you decided to do the episode with just me and stuff like that um which is yeah, great our, right. our fans definitely enjoy it um and again he is rocking ladies and gentlemen the deli art of survival uh hat on today it is still to the best of my knowledge the number one magazine and yes, on is. amazon all over all over the world ladies and gentlemen um and, and also in the 15th issue yeah, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I forgot to talk about that real quick. So, yeah. yes, you are in the 15th issue. Yes, I am. Because um, that, that was brought to my knowledge, I think, after the fact. It might have been before. I don't know. I have to call Glenn. <laughs> I'm like, um, but, yeah, man, I'm like, so, again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've been talking with uh, Shion Frank. Banano, did I did I not butcher it? Did correct. I get it? Did I get correct. it? Oh, there good. Because go. I was really gonna I was really gonna let my inner Italian come out and be yeah. like Frankie the hands, you know he's gonna <laughs> let hands on you all, and yeah. you know and then now next thing I know I'm gonna get hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want we don't want that. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm Israel Lopez and say without my partner Crab Barakala Chidoshi, um, Shion, want to tell the folks goodbye. Uh, we're waiting on you to tell tell people goodbye. Oh, goodbye, everybody! Thank you. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the the time I spent here, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. All right, and you've been listening to the Marshall Maze.